Welcome, Jessica. You are with us at the Fantastic Film Festival in Strasbourg for A Little Joe. Uh, we already had a great success at the Cannes Film Festival uh, with a, an acting award. And I would, I would like to start with a question about, uh, ac uh, about the way you direct. Uh, because um, um, actors play with a lot of sobriety in the film. A lot of? Sobriety. And uh, this, is it because of the way uh, dialogues were written or is it the way you, you direct them? Um, I don't know that word, sobriety. It's uh, with undertone, you know? Ah, mm -hmm. well, I would say the, the, the story is a little bit about this big question mark, who is that other person? So, of course, part of the directing was to create uh, characters personalities in the film that are ambiguous, that have contradictory sides in them. And in the beginning you think maybe, for example, that Chris, the assistant of the main character, that he's a nice guy, and then five scenes later you you feel that he has a sort of hidden aggression or something that is maybe not at all very nice. <laughs> and the same also with the little son of the main character, so all those persons um, have different sides to themselves and that is, I would say, a, really a part of what the story tries to say. Yeah. Um, the art direction is really impressive in the movie and um, when I saw the way you were using colors and costumes, I thought about old metal dramas like Douglas Sirk or mm -hmm. George Cukor's film. Uh, well, is it a conscious influence for you? Um, I like the Douglas Sirk films but uh, well, maybe he's not one of the most influential directors for me. Um, it's strange, but I feel very much related to a film director who filmed in black and white, Maya Darren. She was an exper experimental filmmaker in the 1940s in New York. Her films have a surrealist quality. They have, have they're like magic poems with strange Japanese music. And I feel very connected to these films. And even though they are black and white, I, I have the feeling <laughs> their visuals correspond to the ones of Little Joe. Yeah, and uh, then let's have a word about the music, because you go in the same way with there is a, a very oriental music, Japanese flutes. Can you tell us a word about this? That is exactly the same composer who worked for Maya Darren. It's Teiji Ito. Um, the music for Little Joe was already composed 20 years ago, something like that. I, I found the music because I was looking for Japanese drum music. And I knew, of course, the music of the Maya Darren films. And I thought this could e do exactly what I was looking for, which is to add some strangeness more than only suspense. The music promises a sort of suspense, but at a certain point, as an audience, you also think, but it's very strange. Is, is it suspense or is it, <laughs> is it making fun of me? Because sometimes the music is too much for the scene and so and, and I find that very interesting. I try to create those gaps where the audience has to wake up a little bit and think about what they see and what they hear. Um, it's, um, if I say that, uh, well, the movie was shown to uh, an audience for a, a fantastic film festival. Uh, I think it's the second time in one week that uh, you come to such kind of festival. Yeah. That kind of audience, do they react in a certain way? Yes, um, which I like very much is that I have the feeling there is a lot of enthusiasm um, to what I am used being a so-called art house filmmaker, I'm used to an older audience, more female audience. I have the feeling the cinema yesterday and also last week was full of young people and also very many men. So I, I found that very interesting, very positive, very good. Of course. And um, if I say that one of the main subjects of Little Joe is that nature always finds its way, would you agree with me? Yes. <laughs> so uh, thanks a lot for your answers and uh, all the luck for Thank you the very next much. festival. Thanks. Thank you.